tired and I'm waiting for AAA. AAA actually doesn't come here after it's a whole going to be a whole uh, God, you hear a whole uh, Rube Goldberg situation here until I get to work this morning um, it might be the afternoon by then who knows uh, anyway I want to make another video this morning a political video listening on the radio and they're talking about the economic effects of immigration reform and this is quite shocking to me um, and yes a lot of people have been skirting the law have been ignoring the law and people knew that the laws wouldn't be you know uh, wouldn't be enforced but now they want to work laws that are actually on the books as they should. That's what laws are there for, is to be followed, and, you know, that's why we have laws. And the crazy thing is they're saying, well, look at the economic impact of following the law. Look at how difficult it's going to be, you know. Which really means is that people who are here legally who follow the law, you have to pay them a minimum wage, and you can't afford to pay minimum wage. So we have illegal immigrants who will just take anything and uh, and we can pay them less than minimum wage because we're breaking the law anyway. <laughs> you know, and that's how we're going to be able to get this work done. And I'm like, seriously? We have laws for a reason, you know. And it, it what it reminds me, though, is, you know, like the Democrats are just keeping their same old ways as they have, excuse me, forever, you know, go back to, uh, you know, to Andrew Jackson, go back to, you know, all uh, the other Democrats since Jackson, and, uh, you know, how the whole point of the Democrat Party was to keep slavery alive, and they said, well, it was it for for their uh, economic purposes. They couldn't, they, their economy would fall apart without it. And they're like, look at what the Republicans did to us with, you know, and, and the reconstruction and all the difficulties that it took because those darn Republicans had to go and free our slaves. You know, that's, and really, to this day, the same racist core of the Democrat Party is what's going on here with the immigration reform and the opposition to immigration reform. It's not that they care about people. It's that they, it's all comes down to the economy. It's really just like, all right, we can't have slaves anymore because that's what the Democrats really always wanted. So we'll just have, you know, these people who, you know, we'll pay them something so they're not really slaves, but it's basically the same thing. And it's just shocking to me how they don't see the hypocrisy in this. And they're like, oh, well, look at the, the, these families are being torn apart. That's not what it's about. That's not what they care about. They care about, you know, they're able to, you know, have two different classes. You have Americans who they want to pay $15 an hour for minimum wage jobs. So then all that's going to do is just make more people pay off the books, ignore the laws again or just not have jobs and be on, you know, unemployment or whatever it is. So it's like, you know, what, what do they really want? And it's really come down to the same old slave owning mentality that, you know, the plantation mentality, which is, you know, what the Democrats have always been. And the Democrats are still the party of the KKK. They just branded it differently. They're trying to, you know, to really what it's all about. You know, all of the things that the Democrats hold dearly are rooted in racism. You know, Planned Parenthood is just basically you can't lynch them while they're alive or we'll lynch them before they're born. You know, because look at how the African-American community has been destroyed since Word Roe versus Wade. How many African-Americans have been lynched in the womb? And that was all part of Marilyn Sanger's idea when she founded Planned Parenthood was based in racism and, and their, her, her hatred of different races. 
Um, you know, that's where Hitler got a lot of his ideas from. I mean, folks have to learn history. You know, that's what Woodrow Wilson, that was his whole idea. Um, and recognize what's really going on here and how really, you know, what uh, Lyndon B. Johnson did is that he fooled so much of the community into voting for the racist Democrat Party by repainting because and a lot of it was just because he signed a bill that all the Democrats voted against and was a purely Republican bill. You know, and people and part of that is because people look at the executive branch and they ignore the legislative branch when at that point in presidential politics there was a slight difference but in in the um, but when you look at who really voted for the Equal Rights Act, we're all Republicans. So, this is, you know, quite shocking to me that this is what I'm listening to on NPR, that they're saying, you know, uh, think of the economic impact of doing away with, uh, you know, of, of just enforcing the immigration laws that are on the books, and how, you know, we're not going to have this cheap labor anymore. It's it's really reminiscent of the old plantation days. And I don't understand how people don't see it. Don't understand that, you know. It's, um, you know, because think of, you know, all these people. They're not, they're not being, <coughs> you know, since they're already breaking the law by hiring these people illegally. Do, does anybody really think that all the other laws are being kept? <coughs> <coughs> just fairness uh, there's so much abuse of these communities and that is because uh the abuse has taken place because of failure to follow the laws so it's it, it, it it's really shocking to me you know i mean you know it's it's not about keeping out people because of their race because of their ethnicity because of their nation of origin it's about following the rules, you know. I'm not even talking about... It's not even like, you know... I used to hear people complain about... Oh, you know, you got to press 1 for English and press 2 for Spanish and this and that. And, uh, oh, I, that's not what bothers me, you know. I'm not... I have no problem with that. America can be a place with tremendous diversity. And we should be welcoming... Of immigrants, it's not. You know, I'm not saying, oh, well, my ancestors had to learn English, so you should have to learn English too. No, I can. Uh, there, English is not the official language of America. We don't have an official language on the books in America. That's not what I'm talking about. Even though I'm sure there are people who feel that way, um, what I'm just talking about is just follow the laws that they have. And the reason why there's this pushback against enforcing laws that are on the book, and f and a pushback against uh, following it is because really the Democrats want to con continue this um, this whole culture of abuse against people, uh, against undocumented aliens uh, because for selfish you know, it's the old for selfish reasons, it's the old um, it's the old, uh, you know, plantation mentality, and, and now it's not just in the South, it's, it's really the whole country. How many factories, how many, jo how many jobs all together? And, you know, there are people, in, you know, in, in all different communities that take advantage of this. And the thing is, they know they're not going to get in trouble for it, so nobody even bothers, you know, but they're like, oh, all these, you know, all, uh, all these factories are going to go out of business, all these you know, things, you know, the costs are going to go up or whatever it is, but we have laws for a reason. If you want to reform the laws, we got to figure it out, figure out how to work. And, and yes, it is going to be difficult, just like it was difficult to go through, um, to go through uh, a reconstruction after the Civil War, but it was necessary to get rid of the evil of slavery. And so, too, it's necessary to find, to make um, immigration reform, to ensure that immigration is done in a legal way, to end the tremendous amount of abuse that's done against people who are in this country illegally. 
you know, and, and if anything, those folks should be the ones who are welcoming it because it's ending the abuse that they've gone through, you know, and, uh, and giving them opportunities. And, you know, what, maybe in light of that, there should be considerations to lower the minimum wage or to make a tier system in the minimum wage and so forth in order to protect people because it, all raising the minimum wage does is it forces people to just either work off the books to, to it, it, it just le it doesn't make people keep the law it just it leads to people breaking the law more often than not uh, especially with regards to illegal aliens so it, it's it's surprising to me it's shocking to me that this is the discussion that's going on and it's so reminiscent when you learn history of the arguments for keeping slavery even people said oh, I know <coughs> I know it's wrong to have slavery but you know we need it for the economy that was what the Democrats in the South always were claiming and you know and it's the same thing it's the exact same thing now except the difference is when there was slavery at least there was some guilt behind it this they they are so uh, even though yeah there were self-righteous people who were like well the bible says it's okay to have slavery but the thing was is that the bible when the bible spoke about slavery it was talking about you know basically if someone is going to have slavery there are laws to how slavery had to be conducted to protect the rights of the slaves meaning the bible was given in a time when slavery was the norm unfortunately there is still a tremendous amount of slavery in the world today um but when it was but what the bible did was if not say it didn't say it's okay to have it you should you shouldn't it's good it's bad it's saying this is the reality but slaves are people and they have rights which was a radical idea at that time that god gave uh because god understood the people in his time in the time when he was giving the torah that this is how to operate in this and really what it was was that in that time slavery was seen as a as a road to get better in society it was really in place it, a lot of it was more like indentured servitude more than slavery although there, there were two types there was the indentured servitude and there was the slavery and there were two different things but both ensured the keeping of the rights of the slave which were ignored in most of the world and uh, all the rest of the world said slaves have no rights and the Bible is saying, no, they do have rights, and you have to pr protect them as human beings. And and really, what the sages said is, anyone who acquires a slave is really acquiring himself a master. And really, you know, we see that the, the Jewish tradition frowned upon slavery, um, except as a means to to help the slave, and not as a means to help the master. Um, and it was something that was meant to be phased out eventually. Um, it, it's very clear that it, you know there was no intention. And some folks are saying, "Well, if it's in the Bible, it's good and it's and it's righteous." And, and nobody, nobody really, you know, if you, if you read what it really says, you, you understand what it really means. Um, but that was in those days, and not in these days. And I really think that the emancipation of slavery came about because of the biblical institution of slavery meaning that the bible introduced the ideas that slaves do have rights and they and you know they should and which was a radical idea in that time which and still today where there is slavery there it's something that people don't believe they don't think that slaves have rights and that's totally wrong you know so you know it, it, if anything biblical slavery was not an issue of ownership as much as it was a relationship it was um more like a, a student and a teacher relationship in a way that you know this person was learning how to advance in society was learning valuable tools so that when they would be freed 
they would gain status in life. Um, so in any event, that's neither here nor there. But the point, what I'm saying here, is that uh, is that uh, the Democrats are still basically holding on to their old plantation slavery ways, and they're justifying it with a self-righteous attitude that's totally misplaced and should just, uh, it's just, it's mind-boggling that this is the way that they, um, they, uh, they are handling it. And the thing is, every 